Hey guys, Jay Siemens here. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we're gonna answer one of the questions I am most commonly asked, and that is what are your live scope settings when you're out ice fishing? So first thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna set up my new live scope module and screen on my new shuttle from Summit Fishing Equipment, and then we're gonna head out fishing, and I'll show you exactly how I like to dial in my graph. All right, first thing is Summit Fishing Equipment came out with a new graph, and the cool thing is, is they're always tweaking their designs. It's not mass produced overseas. When they're making these machines, they're, they're made in the States. So they're always tweaking, how can they make it better, changing the switches, changing, you know, exactly how things are cut with their CNC machines. So they actually changed materials. All right, so now their shuttles are made out of something called HDPE plastic. I don't know much about it, but they said this is some of the most durable material they can get. And it actually, a, a similar shuttle in aluminum is lighter. They were working on an aluminum prototype that I used last winter, and they actually scrapped the aluminum idea. I know there's a lot of aluminum shuttles out there, but there's definitely uh, a lot of pros to this plastic type over the aluminum, and you would not believe how durable this is. This one, as you can see, it all fits together very tight, so there's not a lot of you know cold air. It keeps a little more insulated, a little warmer, because you keep that battery a little more out of the elements, it's gonna stay warmer. So this, this material in general isn't gonna get as cold as aluminum and the ice snow won't build up on the bottom. It won't be cold on your hand the same way as aluminum. So but they said this material is the way they wanna go. And they actually sent me a picture of this shuttle. This is the prototype with a vehicle on top of it. Ridiculous, I'll, I'll insert it. But I just, th this one is the one that I was using for the last couple of videos. I wanna show you a quick little stress test just because I think people get scared of a plastic shuttle. All right, we have the shuttle here. I mean. I'm gonna hurt myself. I'm putting like all my weight on that. All right, now we're gonna get into what my setup is for this year because it is different. Um, I did a side by side by side comparison with Lowrance, Hummingbird, and Garmin. I don't have a sponsorship with any of these companies. It is very clear that I use a bit of everything for different reasons. I stand by this. I think Garmin has the best live imaging. Their technology has been around for longer. They keep upgrading. I'm, I'm not saying that, you know, Lowrance or Hummingbird is trash. I think it depends on mapping in your area. For me, I wanna have the best live imaging, so that's why I go Garmin. This year, I switched to the 8610. This is the GPS map. This is a more expensive unit. It's about twice the price as the Echo Map Ultra. I would recommend the Echo Map Ultra to almost anyone unless you want to screen record. This specific unit has HDMI out, which is important if you want to screen record if you're doing YouTube videos. Having the screen recording has been life changing for making videos and just making sure that live scope is running with the live scope cam as much as possible. I would say probably the optimal size if you're looking to get one specifically for ice fishing is a nine inch screen. I think if you want to cross over for ice fishing in open water, I'd go with 10 inch. And then here's the shuttle. So there's two options on the CNC Summit shuttle. You can get the unassembled and the assembled version. I would highly recommend getting the assembled version. It's an extra, I think 20 bucks American and you get the assembled version. So like I said, that HDPE plastic, um, it's got a couple holes cut out already on the top. I added those holes for the bracket that I'm gonna put on. And then this is the hole down here where all my wires are going through. It's got the pole holder on the back. It's got all the wires dangling off. There are a lot of wires. You've got the light for glowing your jigs. It's got the cool summit uh, engraved into that. Two USBs and then this charging port, which is something that I've added myself in the past. So it's cool that they added that onto the design now. And then these buttons, this is also a big upgrade from the last one. These are flush mount buttons. So you don't have to worry about them getting popped out. You know, it's, it's just like anything. It's not massive changes, but it's a lot of small changes that make it better. And, and this is honestly probably my favorite difference with the entire shuttle from last shuttle to this shuttle is it's a smaller, I can use the smaller bag now. In the past, I had to use the big size bag. It's just a little less bulky. Live scope is still a giant thing to haul around on the ice, but any way you can make it a little bit smaller, I'm a big fan, so. Um, and then next to the battery, we have the new 12 volt, 23 amp hour. This one has two USBs on top. You can turn that on, it'll tell your voltage. And then as far as the transducer, we have the LVS 34, this is the, the Live Scope Plus. And then this is the new uh, ice fishing version. Um, I think it's the LVS 34i or IF. And it is noticeable, this cord is a different material and it is so much more pliable, so much more flexible in the winter. When it's really cold, they make a custom cover for it as well that you can slide the transducer in. I think that's all I got. We're gonna start sliding everything in the shuttle and get ready to hit the ice. Um, the first thing we are gonna do is put the graph bracket on the top here. 
So this is my own cord here that you'll need to supply. And I'm gonna put new connectors on here and I'm gonna splice it all together. All right, so I'm gonna join my, my dongle and the charging cord together. All right, that step is done. Now we can hook this onto the battery. And, and it's so important to just get all the cords in there nice and clean, because it can get messy in a hurry. There's a lot of cords to kind of need to keep them bundled on that side, because that side is gonna be pretty much all battery. So the next thing you wanna do is you wanna put that black box in the back. You can see there's a couple holes pre-drilled there. It comes with a little bag of hardware, and you're gonna mount it with the, with the ports facing up. We're gonna hang this baby on there without trying to push all the screws through. All right, we're just gonna tighten this up. All right, GLS unit is mounted on. There you go. Looking beautiful. We're gonna pass some of our cables through. We've got the power cable, then we've got another power cable. All right guys, here is the AverMedia recorder, which I'm gonna be rigging on my shuttle as well. Uh, this is what we use for AquaViews for recording. It, it's not an amazing option, but they're just, I don't know if there is a, a much better option out there. Um, so it records through a micro SD on the back. And then I've got two right angle power cords even there, you can see that one's cracking, but these are always a weak spot. So I purposely got right angle cords. I'm gonna tape them together. Just the less play you can have on that power cord, that I feel like is the spot where these things go bad. So I'm gonna tape them together. So now as far as any cords, uh, you wanna coil them up, you know, nice and small so they can fit inside. You gotta, you gotta picture the battery's gonna take up that side of it. But uh, yeah. All right, so I bundled up my network cord. Here's the power cord going in the back there. And network cord hooked up in the back now wire holder there is going to hold these two wires fastening that down and that holds those wires out of the way this cord is going to come back out i'm just bundling the extra stuff in there so that's going to go out into the back of the graph as you can see it's cleaning up nice in there we're going to get that power cord pushed through this is all cozy but i mean there's a reason it's cozy otherwise the shuttle is giant we're dropping that dakota lithium in and it just drops in like a glove right there. We have that room right there to stuff the rest of the cords in. But before we do that, we need to connect the cables into these little dealies. So you've got your positive in, that holds nice and tight. This is your negative. We've got another positive and another negative. I'm gonna just slowly fit everything in here. Once again, I'm gonna check, make sure they're turning on and giving life. All right, before we close it up, we should put this battery holder in here. All right, so that just keeps the battery a little more in place. Not that it's gonna move around that much anyways, based on how full it is in there. Now we're gonna start closing this beautiful thing up. All right, so she is sealed up. We've got the two cords, the power cord and the network cord ready to rock here. All right, the next thing I do wanna figure out on the front here is how we're gonna mount this right here. What I like about this is if I put it underneath the screen here, then it's protected by everything. It doesn't get jostled because you jostle these and you can lose all your recording. I'm gonna put a little bit of Velcro on the top. I may have to like drill into it or crazy glue it down. I'm not sure how it's gonna to stick to this plastic, but basically I'm gonna mount it right here. So when I'm looking at the screen, there's a light there and I can tell if it's recording or not. All right, so I put those Velcros on there. Boom, so now that's just stuck. Now that's on it all the time. My recorder, I can see it. It's a little off to the side there. We are getting power through the USB. You'll see a red or blue light right there. There you go, it's flashing. Now I won't be able to show this, but I'm gonna put the HDMI in the back. All right, so now everything is dialed for screen recording. We are so close. The last step really for the main setup is to connect this cord into the black box. This is the transducer cord. We're gonna wrap it on. Yeah, and then I think we can just put it in the bag. There might be a better way to do it than how I'm doing it, but all right. So it's now in the shuttle. We'll do just the test to see if it fires up. And then I will show you the extendable pole as well. I, I don't know exactly how long this thing is. It's ridiculous. I can't even fit the whole thing in the shot. You are never gonna need a longer live scope pole than that. If you do, probably have bigger issues that you're dealing with. But it's got the tripod on the top that can spin around. And um, yeah, it's, it's adjustable. It's good for early ice. It's good for late ice. It's good for in the middle. Uh, you can also turn that for perspective mode. Not something I really use ice fishing much, but. All right, and now this clips right onto the back. I'll show you guys sideways here. Boom, friction fits in there. All right guys, so that's that's pretty much it. It's gonna go in the soft bag yet. You don't need to use it in the soft bag. And like I said, now they use the smaller size bag fits the 10 inch screen, which is, I, I, I just, I love that fact about it. So we're gonna drop it in the bag. 
like so, and then there's a couple of Velcro straps on either side here that go around the handle so the bag doesn't fall off. I normally run the transducer out the handle hole and then it stays out there all the time. If you, you don't even need to put in the cover, but then I just put in the side pouch right there, close it, and that's where the transducer rides. If I'm doing a big run or between trips, the pull holder will fit then through the bag and we'll zip this baby up. There you go, they also upgraded the zipper, a much beefier zipper on this one. The bag is very tight on it, but it is so much smaller than the old bag. I'm just gonna show you side by side because I know I keep talking about it. Is that better? Can you see how much smaller it is? It's just with how big LiveScope is on the ice. I, I love the downsize. Anyways, it's been a lot of talk and the last thing I wanna show you is how easy it is to charge. So like I said, I have a bunch of those quick connect ends and I put them, I rig them onto all my electronics so I can use like the same charger for anything that's running a lithium battery. Is just plug it in at the end of the day. Don't want to mess around with getting at the battery. Now it's charging, we're good, and we're going fishing tomorrow. All right guys, well we are out on the ice. The shuttle is assembled. We have found some fish in the area to hopefully show you what a fish looks like on the graph. But first thing, as far as settings go and just getting the best reading possible is making sure your transducer is level because this can turn you know, left to right, but it can also tilt, tilt this way. So you wanna make sure it's straight. Sometimes I'll spend minutes adjusting you know, exactly how the transducer sits, just so I can perfectly read my jig. As I mentioned in past videos, the LiveScope transducer is 135 degrees by approximately 18 degrees. So it's getting a pretty big swath. There's, there's different settings under the installation setup on your graph and you can do down view or forward view. Most of the time I keep it on forward view. You'll see there's a couple notches on the pole and then a notch, a big white line on the, on the transducer itself. So I often keep this pointed forward. That's kind of the best way to search for fish, which is what we're doing now. We're looking for crappies on a mud basin. I don't think there's a better use for live imaging than finding these scattered pan fish. So basically you wanna make sure your transducer is gonna be below the bottom of the ice. If it's not getting below the bottom of the ice, you're not gonna get a good reading. So we're gonna drop it down here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do on the shuttle here is we are gonna turn it on by pressing that button on the right. That's gonna give it power to the shuttle. And then I'm gonna press the power button on my graph and that's gonna turn it on. That button on the left is for the glow, the UV glow if you wanna charge your jig. How you wanna set up your transducer, you wanna line this handle up with the way the transducer is pointing because that way, you know, whichever way I'm pointing the handle, that's where the fish are. So if I see fish 10, 20, 30 feet out, I can line myself up when I'm drilling holes with this handle. And it, it's always that visual indicator of knowing where the transducer is pointing. And now you've got the different settings. Right now, when you look at the color palette, this is my favorite color palette I like to lose, use. This is called blue. And when a lot of people see it, they think that I'm using the old Panoptics, the first generation, because it used a similar color palette. But the truth is, this is live scope. This is the newer generation. Um, but this color palette just kind of looks like the old school. I like this color palette because it pops. When you see a fish, that harder return, that red color, it pops really good against the blue. It's nice for filming. It might not give you the exact same definition. So if you under options, sonar setup, appearance, you can play with color schemes. Probably the amber is what a lot of people are used to seeing. I know that's what Aaron Weeb uses a lot on his live scope. Amber is good. I just feel like it doesn't pop. I don't like it for filming as much. So amber, very common one. I myself like to use the blue color palette. So that's the first part on my settings. There is color gain, which you'll notice makes that red pop a little more. It just kind of bumps the contrast up a bit. Bumping it up a little bit, 65 is good. I don't really mess with that too much. The, the main settings you're gonna deal with are your gain, your TVG, and your noise rejection. TVG stands for time varied gain or time variance gain. Basically what that does is it changes the gain based on where the object is in your, in your spectrum or whatever you wanna call it, it, beneath you. So if you turn your TVG up, it will lower the sensitivity directly below your hole. If you turn the TVG off, it'll kind of be similar all the way across um, sonar setup, TVG. So TVG is off. If I go TVG high, you'll see that it drops the gain below me. So it does clean it up a little bit, but it's it's less gain. I'm fine with the gain being higher. Just in general, when I'm running through live scope, I would always favor things being on the messier side so I can gain as much data as possible rather than trimming it back and then maybe missing that fish. Noise reject is one that I often keep it high. You can see if I turn it off, it can get messy. So I'll keep 
noise reject at high, PVG off. Those are two that I really don't mess with. Then what I'm changing after this is I'm changing gain. You can see as you crank the gain up, it's exactly that. It's a sensitivity in deeper water. You might need to bump it up a little bit more. Most of the time, my gain is in that 60 to 75 range. But now when I'm looking for fish, maybe I wanna keep it a little noisier. I'm gonna go in the 75 and then I'm gonna search. Since switching to the LVS 34, the new transducer, I definitely search further. I used to search around 100, 100 feet away. Now with this new transducer, depending on depth, I can still see fish. I mean, right now, if you look at 120, you can see there's a crappie 120 feet away. Yeah, I have no problem seeing fish 140, 150 feet away right there. There's two crappies 80 feet away. So what I could do right now is I could go drill 80 feet away and be right on top of those fish. But, but I mean, it's, I think people get pretty intimidated by the settings. It's really not that much. TVG off, noise reject high, and then I just mess with the gain. And I do like the blue color palette. I got put onto that by my buddy Jason Young, who helped design the shuttle actually. And he's got a Facebook group called LiveScope Addicts. And if you have any LiveScope related questions, he probably has the answer for it. So um, right now we're dropping down. So another thing that you'll get more tuned in with as you're using LiveScope is figuring out how big these fish are on the graph, right? So I've got these grids set up. I like turning the grids on and I can tell that, you know, if a fish spans two grids, then it's two fish wide. Right now you can see my jig. I'm gonna zoom in right on it there. See, there's two fish swimming up for me right now. That one is racing. Look at this. He's staring at the jig. I'm just gonna keep lifting, lifting, lifting. Oh, he's right on it. Oh, got him. And it's cool because that's something that, you know, is tough. It's tough on a 2D or a flasher to tell the size of the fish. But now you can actually tell what size of fish you're dealing with because you can look at those grids. So I do like keeping the grid on. It does keep it a little bit messier. But um, yeah, I mean, that fish spanned one grid and that was a foot long crappie. There's another one down there. You can come fish beside me if you want, Danny. All right. We got Danny hiding in the background. So I had a Danny, Danny from the Spicy Fish Challenge. He's still recovering. So right now you can see Danny's jig dropping down. Like I said, something I'm always messing with is just adjusting the pole, adjusting the transducer, and just trying to get that best reading possible. One of the biggest differences I noticed from going to the 34, from being on the 32 before, is just the, the definition in deeper water. We're 30 feet of water with like tiny crappie jigs. In the past, it could be a little tougher to find, but now with this new transducer, it's just, it's got that clarity and that target separation a little bit deeper. All right, we got some fish fired up. Oh yeah. Ooh, Danny's on. It looks really small from this. <laughs> the definition, that's 30 feet deep. He's touching Daddy's jig. Oh! Oh, ho, 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 baby. 